if you've been involved with marketing or advertising for very long, I really hope that you know the name John Caples. Now, uh, he's, he's very much known for his book, Tested Advertising Methods. But the book that I want to talk to you about today is a different book from his. Uh, it's lesser known than Tested Advertising Methods. It's How to Make Your Advertising Make Money. Uh, so it's, it's lesser known, but it's just as good. And uh, John Caples, when he published this, he was the vice president of BBDO, one of the world's biggest advertising agencies. And the legend is that he actually, so he actually had a gigantic set of filing cabinets at BBDO. And all that it was, was for each brand that they worked on, it was all the different split tests with all the different data of all the different ads that they ran for all their different clients. And he amassed this gigantic library of tested advertising. And so whenever they had a new project, they were able to go, you know, we've worked with this competitor. We've worked with this other, uh, this other business that targets the same market. We've worked with that particular company before, and we can actually go back and we can pull all the files and we can look at the different ads that were created, the different ads that were run and how they performed. And we can use that to make our advertising decisions and Capels maybe above almost anybody else in advertising history was completely dedicated to this idea that you let the market decide what's good in advertising and you do it through testing. And and so anybody who is a serious student of advertising absolutely needs to be a student of Capels. And today we're going to talk about 12 ways to find advertising ideas that come straight from this book, How to Make Your Advertising Make Money. These are the proven direct response, marketing, copywriting, and entrepreneurship success strategies you can use today to write your own ticket and create the life you want. I am Roy Furr, and this is Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Now, here's today's breakthrough. Okay, so I'm going to dive into the 12 ways to find advertising ideas from John Caples. I'll share some insights out of the book as well as my own reflections on it. So number one, first idea, cash in on your own personal experience. Go inside your head, go inside your imagination, go find your personal stories. What is, what's your experience? What are your fears, frustrations, failures, your dreams, your desires, your destiny in relation to this particular product, this service, the, the, the benefit that it promises, the problem that it solves? What's been your experience? That's a great start. <laughs> Number two, organize your own experience in advertising that. So this is especially relevant if you're working with an ongoing client or inside your own business, but you wanna study what's worked for you or for the client and and just compare what's worked. Uh, and and one of the recommendations that, that John Caples has is test a lot of different ads quickly and then arrange the ads in order of response rate and look for patterns in winning ads. Now, it used to be for that, I mean, he had it hard. He had it hard relative to what we have today. Today, you could, for example, you could create a bunch of different Google ads. You could create a bunch of different Facebook ads. You could create a bunch of different ads on all these different platforms and have them rotated until you have some statistical significance of which ads are performing better and which ads are performing worse. And then you're able to compare. If you put them in order of response rate and look for patterns in the winning ads, you'll find some interesting things often. So for example, he said they ran a bunch of ads for life insurance sales, uh, doing lead generation for life insurance salespeople around the country. And what they found was that all of their top ads included the words retirement income in the headline, retirement income. And so what, what did they figure out from that? They figured out that the words retirement income should be in the headline of your ad if you want it to perform well. Now, of course, you're going to test against that going forward, but it forms a great starting point for future ads. Right from the heart, right from the heart. And this is, um, you know, this is very much the, the selling story where you recognize your own problem or challenge with a situation or your own desire that's unfulfilled. And, and, um, and you tie that into the promise of the product. So you know, it's a good question to ask is what are you or have you been 
embarrassed about related to this. And uh, Caples actually told the story that he he actually sat down and he talked with Max Sackheim, another famous, very, very great copywriter from, from advertising history, who wrote the ad, Do You Make These Mistakes in English? And the original client ran that ad for like 40 years, unbeaten. And then it went on and somebody basically stole the ad after that business shut down and ran it for decades more. Do you make these mistakes in English? And it actually came out of Max Sackheim's having English as a second second language and feeling embarrassed of the mistakes that he was making in English. And so he was able to write this ad from his own negative experience of learning English. John Caples had the exact same situation. His dad actually was really good at piano, but but Caples never really learned. And Caples felt embarrassed about that. And he really wanted to play and he felt that desire to play. And that was his inspiration when he wrote the ad. They laughed when I sat down at the piano, but when I started to play, he imagined a scenario where he basically proved everybody wrong. Oh, look, I can play the piano, right? And then he wrote it as a fictionalized account. Number four, learn from the experience of others. Talk to anyone and everyone, uh, especially people within your target demographic, your, your target prospects. You can actually talk to prospects or customers uh, about the particular product. You can ask surveys. Today, I actually recommend that you would use Ryan Levesque's ask method. And uh, specifically, you ask, what's your single most important question about X, about the 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 topic or or uh, whatever of your, your product, or what's your single biggest challenge about X, about getting whatever outcome. And you get people to reveal through their answers to that question what it is that they are most likely to take action on. Talk with the manufacturer or the maker of the product, the person behind the product, the people behind, the team behind the product. Ask a million questions. Like this is this is often the biggest wellspring of valuable content for my ads is I'm, I, I sit down and I have an interview and I ask a bunch of questions about the product itself, especially how or why it was invented or how they came up with it or like what challenges they face. What was their experience that led them to create this product? Um, also ask salespeople. Uh, ask salespeople who have actually sold the product, who've actually talked to prospects, because they'll they'll often be able to tell you, oh, well, here's the most common questions that we get, the most common objections. Here's what people seem to be most excited about uh, when they when they talk about it. So ask salespeople. They talk to your prospects all the time. Study the product. That's the next idea here. Uh, study the product. Everything about it. You know, what's it like to use it. Uh, what is it like if, if possible, like if you're, he says, if you're advertising a car, drive the car, if you're, um, if you're, you know, whatever, whatever the, the particular item is, right? When I was selling backup solar generators, one of the first things that the, the client did, well, number one, he actually flew me to the facility where they assemble the, the backup solar generators. And we talked about it there. And, uh, then he actually sent one to me and had it delivered to me so that I actually have it and I have it available in the garage. So I actually understand what it's like to have this physical solar generator uh, and, and, and interact with it, right? So what's it like to use it? Capture every idea. Like uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's great to focus on all the features that everybody else focuses on. But as you're going through, as you're experiencing the product, as you're studying the product, uh, one of the points that Caples makes here is is anything could be a really interesting idea that is worth sharing. And so just as you are doing this, make sure that you're taking notes and capturing all your ideas. Review previous advertising for the product. So what's already worked? Um, what what did the previous ad say? What are the common themes? You can also look to, to articles, to press, to PR, to other write-ups about the product. Just, just look at you know, what are, how do other people talk about it? There, there can be a lot of fodder there for your own copy. Study competitors ads. So competing products and services, um, also other products and services that may not look like a direct competition, but that can help people achieve the same result. So, you know, what's just coming to mind immediately is a, an advertising agency it could be one thing to actually study other advertising agencies, but it could also be another thing to to study how uh, how books on advertising are sold. So if you run a Facebook ads agency, how are people advertising Facebook books for people who want to run their own Facebook ads? 
So uh, study competitors as what does everybody say? What have you missed? Oftentimes what you'll find is that there's kind of a minimum of things that are required. So for example, if you're advertising a, you know, a, a retail store, there's going to be store hours and there's going to be things like that, that that are included. Or if you're advertising a dentist or some other medical practice, there's going to be certain contact information, um, ways to get a hold of them, ways to get more information, a listing of services covered. You know, what are what are all the basic things that are covered? And maybe there's going to be different positioning that you didn't even think about that you're going to see as you study the other um, the other competitors' ads. What's featured, and then importantly, if you go all through if you go through all of this, oftentimes you'll find like a space, you'll find an angle, a unique angle that you can come in from, and that can be something at least worth testing. And then remember what ads are repeated often or show up everywhere. Like that, that is a way, like if you, if you look at the ads that are run most often, especially if they have, um, if they have tracking involved. So online, pretty much everything is tracked. And if somebody's spending a ton of money, either they are a big brand and they are, uh, they're willing to lose money on just getting brand recognition out there. Or if it's a smaller business, most likely if they're running a ton of ads and you see them everywhere, it's because it's working. So what ads are repeated often or show up everywhere? Study te testimonials from customers. That's the next way to get ideas. Testimonials, reviews. Uh, you can look to Amazon, like five-star reviews. What do and, and don't just look at your own here. You can look at those competing products again. You can look, you know, what do people love about products like yours? What do people like about products about your products specifically? Uh, Caples also, also talked about running contests for, for best letters. So uh, for example, he said uh, he they got hired to, to advertise a tea brand in the United States and he was a coffee drinker and he wasn't sure why people would drink tea in the morning. And uh, so he they ran a contest for the best letter saying why I love drinking tea in the morning. And, and it was just like fill in the blank. Here's why I love drinking tea in the morning, blah, 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 blah. And they gave, they gave prizes to what they thought was the best submission. And you can use these directly or just for ideas. Like these letters can stimulate all sorts of different ideas. Solve the prospect's problem. So oftentimes, uh, you know, this is kind of the flip side of the testimonial. It's, it's oftentimes we want to focus on, oh, what do you love about this? What do you like about this? You know, what, 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 what's your favorite part about this, right? Instead of that, you can ask, have, have you had any problems or challenges with this? And sometimes this is going to require you to actually shift your offer a little bit. So for example, you know, my, it, it, well, one of the examples that they gave was people didn't like the smell of cat food. And so they, they, uh, they were able to create a low odor cat food. Now I'm kind of afraid for the cats for, you know, 1960s, 1950s um, uh, health code for, for what might've been in that cat food to make it low odor. But, uh, but there was the example that he gave of, you know, they, they were able to recognize that there was this common problem that people were facing. And by solving the problem in the product, they were able to advertise something that was a commercial success. The other thing that you can do is you can look at one star reviews on Amazon. You can you can look at, at bad reviews for products like yours and you can find this, you know, Caples Caples had to go out and, and collect so much data and he had to spend so much money to just test ads and, and all of that. And still he had this huge massive library of of split tests of of testing A versus B and seeing which one performed better. And he had all this data of of consumer interests and consumer surveys and all that stuff. And he was able to gather all that and these spent a fortune to get it. Today on the internet, you can go to any product category in the world. You can look at specific products that are that are like yours and you can say, how are people talking about this on YouTube? How are people talking about this on Reddit? How are people talking about this on Amazon reviews? How are people talking? And you can look at like all these different places that people are talking about this and you can get an idea of what people like and don't like about specific things and what problems they see out there and how you can solve them. Next up, uh, and this is number 11. Capel says, put your subconscious mind to work. Oftentimes what we want to do is we want to 
force our way through a situation. We want to force our way to creativity. We want to force our, our way to coming up with this big idea. And uh, what, what he said is sometimes that just doesn't work. And that's absolutely my experience too. You study everything. You, you take in all the inputs that you can. You take all the notes that you can. You, 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 know, you gather all the research that you can and then don't push it. Go do something else. Go, you know, there's there's a lake fairly close to my house that sometimes I'll take a bike ride around there. It's it's you know, it's about a 30 minute bike ride to get to the lake around the lake and back home. Sometimes I'll take a walk around the neighborhood. Sometimes I'll you know, whatever it is, just go do something else. And actually, there's a there's a famous story from history. And when I think of this, I actually think of the telling of the story in the movie Pi. So Archimedes was a, was a mathematician in ancient Greece. And uh, there was a, <laughs> basically a tyrant ruler who wanted to know if the gold in a crown that he had made for him. So he gave, he gave this jeweler some gold and he said, make a crown for me. And he didn't trust the jeweler. And he said, why or, or he, he he wanted to know if if the jeweler had like had had put other additives in the gold to in effect <coughs> excuse me uh to steal the gold and to give the 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 ruler this crown that was impure right and he said he asked archimedes like how how do you how, how can we figure this out and Archimedes was trying to solve the problem, trying to solve the problem, trying to solve the problem. And he was really stressed out. And the way that the story go, goes, his wife said, you know, go take a bath. Uh, go, you know, go do something else. Don't, don't, you, you've been taking notes on this or trying to solve equations on this for long enough. And she said, just go take a bath. And as he got into the bathtub, he noticed that the water level changed in the bathtub. And um, apparently he, he shouted out, Eureka, I found it. I found it, Eureka. And uh, apparently he also actually ran through the streets of, I think the town was Syracuse, uh, ran through the streets of Syracuse naked, shouting Eureka, <laughs> Eureka, um, because he actually figured out that um, based on weight, a different, uh, so weight and volume have different relationships in different materials. So, uh, for example, th this will be really obvious. A, a pound of gold is going to weigh or is going to be much smaller than a pound of styrofoam or wood, right? Uh, because because gold is a much more dense material, and actually, gold is more dense than silver, um, which was relevant to the crown. And he figured out that the same amount of gold and the same amount of silver should displace different amounts of, of water or gold and anything else. And they were actually able to figure out that the gold had had silver added to it. And this, this jeweler was actually trying to scam or, or steal from uh, this, this tyrant. And, um, <laughs> and it was all because Archimedes actually was willing to take a bath and let his subconscious mind work on it. Uh, so number 12, the final ways to find, the final way to find advertising ideas is uh, what he called ring the changes on a successful idea. And this is a phrase that's not used a lot today, but according to the dictionary definition at the time the book was written, to ring the changes means to vary the manner of performing to repeat with variations. And basically that's repeat successful ad ideas in new ads. Repeat successful ideas in new ads. So you change the picture, you change the headline, you change the story, you change you change the um, the tactical implementation of the idea, but you don't change the fundamental idea itself. So going back to that retirement income idea, you could have 15 ads that all talk about retirement income in slightly different ways that all include retirement income in the headline, but then look like different ads. And the quote from Caples in the book is, once you've found a winning sales idea, don't change it. Your client may tire of it after a year or two. He sees all the ads from layout stage to proof stage to publication stage. Explain to him that when he is tired of the campaign, it's just beginning to take hold of the public. And so 
I don't think Caples would disagree that what you do is, you know, if you have this idea that's working, you keep running those ads as long as they work, but you can keep coming back to those ideas and using them in a new and, and interesting and, and, and a way that feels novel in order to get the attention of your market again until that one fatigues and you replace it and that one fatigues and you replace it. But as long as you can replace and one ad based on that successful idea with another ad based on that successful idea, that is a very high probability way of coming up with your next winning ad. And it's, of course, you can also be testing alongside that. You can be testing new ideas. And then if you find a new idea that works even better than your previous successful idea, then you ring the changes on that one. Now, if you have a good idea and you want to actually use that to create an entire ad or sales letter, or video sales letter, uh, then it helps to actually understand the, the deep underlying psychology, the deep underlying structure of what makes for an effective ad. And I have training called High Velocity Copywriting that I'll include a link in the description with this episode that, that goes into outlines templates for writing effective advertising based on what I consider to be the three big categories of big idea. And, um, and and so that's a great way to go deeper from here. That training is actually part of my BTMS Insiders training library. It's like Netflix for copywriting and marketing training. So you, you sign up, you pay one low monthly fee, you get access to everything. And I'll include a link to BTMS Insiders as well. The high velocity copywriting training is one of many titles. There's over 100 hours of training for marketers and copywriters. Uh, for for you to uh, develop your, your skills in this area. And so check out those links in the description. I'll also include a link to get the book on Amazon, How to Make Your Advertising Make Money by John Capable Caples. It's full of great ideas. And importantly, it lets you actually compare tests that were actually run in the marketplace. And he says, here's the underlying psychology that I believe made this ad work better than this ad. So my name is Roy Fur. This has been your daily episode of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets, 12 ways to find advertising ideas based on John Capel's with my own experience mixed in as well. I'd love it if you'd leave a comment or review. Let me know on a scale of one to 10 how valuable you're finding this and why. What are your takeaways? What are your action items? Tap that like button before you go so you get more content like this delivered to you. And so the magical algorithms of the internet will know to share this with more people like you who will find it valuable. You can certainly share it with folks directly and subscribe before you go. Subscribe here. You can also go to BreakthroughMarketingSecrets.com. Get my daily emails Monday through Friday, including episode notifications and more exclusive content for email subscribers. Again, Roy Fur for Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Thanks for tuning in for this episode and I look forward to seeing you again soon. See you soon. Bye. Thank you once again for tuning in to this daily episode of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Remember, check out the links with this episode for even more value. Now make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and engage in every way you can to keep this show going and growing and delivering daily value to you. I'll catch you soon for your next big breakthrough.